Welcome to the uh, Faith Revival Holiness Church, also Faith Revival Place International. I'm your host, Minister in Providence, M.G. Mays. Let us begin in prayer. Father, we love you, we cherish you, we thank you, Father, for all things. Father, we thank you for this to work correctly and uh, help, help me uh, put this uh, from my iPhone to uh, YouTube correctly. I pray and I thank you and I, and I pray for people to get healed and delivered and I thank you and praise you. Amen. Today's uh, teaching is called Torah Vayetra. Uh, Vayetra is, of course, Leviticus uh, Shemi, which is eighth. This is the lesson about eighth. Um, and it's Leviticus chapter 9, verse 1 through 24, 10 through 1 through 11. And the scripture saith, On the eighth day Moshe called Aaron, his, his sons and the leaders of Israel, and said to Aaron, Take a male calf for sin offering, a ram burnt offering, both without default, and offer them before Yahweh, and then tell the people of Israel, Take the male goat for a sin offering, and the, and the cow and the lamb, both a, a year old without default. For burning offerings, and then the oxen and the ram for a peace offering, to a sacrifice for both before Yahweh, and this is what Yeshua did. He he was he paid the price just as a permanent price, just like they had to bring forth the ram, the ox, the um, the the lamb and the goat. Amen. Uh, and, and then the ox and the ram for a peace offering, a sacrifice before Yahweh. Also the grain offering mixed with olive oil was his uh, matzah, all unlevered bread basically. Kind of like a cracker, but better, a lot better. Because today Yahweh is going to appear to you. And, and they brought the, what? Moshe had ordered before the tent of meetings, and the whole community approached and stood before Yahweh. And Moshe said to, "This is what Yahweh had ordered you to do, so that the glory of Yahweh will appear to you." Amen. Just like it appeared to us through the the cross, through all the things of scriptures put together because remember the word was made flesh and dwelt with us and also the word of God came out of the heart and mind of Yeshua Jesus as well amen and the son of Aaron presented the, the blood to him and and dipped his finger in the blood and put it on the horn of the altars which is the authority of God and then poured it out the blood on the base of the altar, but the fat and the kidneys and the coverings and the liver of it was a sin offering made to go up and smoke on the altar. Because remember, when he, when the Lord was whipped, both both front and back, all things were exposed, just like this. And as Yahweh had ordered Moshe, and then the meat and the skin were to be burned up completely outside the camp, because outside the camp. Uh, Moshe, I mean uh, yeah, yeah, uh, Yeshua was um, was where Gargotha, where he died on the cross. And next, the slatter of the burnt offerings. And Aaron's son brought him the blood, and and he spluttered against the, the sides of the altar and brought him the burnt offerings, peace offerings, and the the head. And he made them go up and smoke in the altar. And he washed the inner organs and the lower parts of the, of the legs and made them go up and smoke on top of the burnt offerings of the altar. And and just as the Lord did, uh, symbolizing what he did on the cross before and after the cross as well. And verse 15, And then the people offered was presented, and he took the goat of, of, of the sin offering with 
uh, was for the people uh, uh, slander in the offerings for the sin and like the early sin offerings and remember the gold offering is after you're saved the lamb is for salvation the gold is after salvation of things committed and Yeshua he would Jesus also was all these things for us before and after okay and so and then the people offered offering was presented and he took the the goat of the sin offering and which was for the people and and slaughtered it and offered it as a sin like earlier the sin offering and then the burnt offerings was presented and he offered it as prescribed as matter and the grain offerings was presented and he took a handful of the what he made go up and smoke in the altar and additional to the morning burnt offerings and he slaughtered the ox and then the ram and the people uh, the sacrifice of peace offering because after he uh, uh, was the sin offering for us on the cross it brought peace unto us as well amen this like here is noted amen uh, and then let's see, we are the grain. The uh, okay, so verse seventeen. The grain offering was presented. To, uh, took a handful of made go up and smoke on the altar. And additional morning burnt offerings, and they slaughtered the ox and the ram. And the people offered a peace offering, and and Aaron's sons brought him the blood which he spl splashed against the sides of the altar. And the fat of the ox and the ram, and the fat of the trails, and the fat of the covering and the inner organs, and the kidneys and the covering of the liver, they put the fat on the on the breast, and then made it, the fat go up and smoke on the altar because he was whipped back side and front side. Amen. So this symbolizes what he went through on the cross. Remember that. And they put the fat and the breast, and he made it. The, the fat go up and smoke on the altar. The, the breast on the right thigh of of Aaron's waved as a wave offering before Yahweh as Moshe ordered. And why was it on the right? Because there was a spear th uh, that was jugged in the right side thigh of Yeshua. So this all symbolizes what he did. And it brings it forward in a more majestical way of understanding how everything was done so so in a perfect way amen verse 22 Aaron raised his hand towards the people blessed them and came down from the offering of sin offering and built offerings and peace offerings and Moshe and Aaron entered the tent of meetings came out to bless the people amen after you are are taking care of the sin of your life and got saved and then the peace came and then the blessing came as you d done what the Lord wants amen and then and then the glory of Yahweh appeared to all the people amen far came forth from the presence of Yahweh consuming the burnt offering the fat and the altar and when the, the people saw it they shouted and fell on their face because it's full of presence of the Lord it's beautiful and let's continue. Uh, but uh, Never and uh, uh, Hevu, the son of Aaron, these are the Hebrews, the uh, name of them, each took his senses, put it on fire, and laid the incenses on it. And the, the offering unauthorized fire became before Yahweh. And some something he had not ordered them to do. So when God orders you a certain way to do things, and you do it your way, well, you could be in trouble like these two young men just became. Let's continue. And as the fire came forth from the presence of Yahweh, consumed them, so that they died in the presence of Yahweh. And Moshe said to Aaron, This is what Yahweh says. Through... Those who are near me, I will be 
uh, consecrated. And before all people, I will be glorified. Amen. Let's read that again. This is very important. You take this in heart. What right here? Through those who are near me, I will be will be consecrated. And before all people, I will be glorified. This is Yahweh we're talking about here. And Aaron kept silent. And Moshe called uh, Michelle, uh, uh, Michelle and uh, El Tafan, the sons of uh, Yuzel, of Aaron's uncle, and told them, Come here, carry the cousins away from the front of the sanctuary to the place under the camp, and they and appeared to the carry them to the their tumics out of the camp, as Moshe said. And then Moshe told Aaron and his son Elazar and uh, Etomar, Et, Etomar, yeah, don't unblindly your hair or tear your clothes. In mourning, so that you won't die, so that Yahweh won't be angry with you and entire community. Amen. Rather, let your kinsmen, the whole house of Israel, mourn because of the destruction Yahweh brought about with fire. Remember, because God's the consuming fire, right? And Yahweh, uh, okay, and then, and then moreover, don't leave. The entrance of the tent of meetings, or you will die because Yahweh uh, 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 anointing oil is on you. Amen. When God's anointing oil is on you, it's a double uh, falling of what God wants you to do. It's a commitment that you cannot break. Amen. So, so when we anoint people with oil, we need to take it seriously, especially when we anoint the minister of all sorts to do the work of God and the anointed. They, they have a double commitment to the Lord immediately of that. And so let's go on, verse 8 of uh, chapter uh, 10 here. And Yahweh said to Aaron, Don't drink any wine or intoxicated liquor. Neither you nor your sons will you. And when you enter the tent of meeting so that you will not die, this is a... Uh, uh, permanently a regulation through all generations so that you won't be uh, distinguished between what the holy and the common and between the unclean and the clean and so that you will teach the people of Israel all the laws that Yahweh has told them through Moshe. Amen. So the tribal Levites got to watch get intoxicated with uh with liquor and wines and things uh the good news is they have dealkalized things um so this is particular for the tribe of Levi to be careful of these things now other uh areas that it tells in proverbs thirty one that um two other areas of people as leaders and leadership should not be de uh, uh intoxicated on on things as well. And also, those that are under a lot of people trying to help them as well. Um, the only people that are allowed to have a little bit, but still not to get to intoxicated, is the everybody in between. But the people, there's two groups that the Lord will let get drunk on these things. And that's people that are, are dying and that's to give, bring comfort to them. And the second group is those that are on the streets for a short time until they get recovered and, and they get on their feet. Those are the only two that God actually allow to get drunk on that is, is the people who are dying and people that are recovering that are on the streets uh, to keep them warm and, and things. But the good news is they are uh, de-alkalized, uh, virginated uh uh, alcohol, what, uh, what do they take the alcohol out? But it has all the good properties still. For those that are in leaders or on the tribe of Levi or, or, you know, in that area. But for people that are every day, you can have the regular stuff, but you can't get drunk on it. That's the key there. And, 
And so this brings to what is this all about the eighth day? Well, the eighth day is the come is a prophecy of the coming of the Lord. See, there's seven days of creation and seven thousand years allotted is as a lot of people are figuring out. And that that doesn't include the time of 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 uh before the uh eating of the forbidden fruit of Adam and Eve. There nobody knows how long that the all you can just speculate is how long that was before they ate the forbidden fruit and started that cycle that we've been in. Um so the eighth day is is symbolizing this in a lot of ways the second coming of the Messiah is is representing of all that he did and it's in its prophecy that he will fulfill all things in the eighth day um, and all things will be summed up and so as you can see all these symbolizations are what he did on the cross and what he continues to do in us. He, you know, he didn't just die as the lamb um, sacrifice, but he also died as the, the goat sacrifice, the, the pigeon sacrifice, the uh, ox sacrifice, the ram sacrifice, the, the grain offerings through uh, the, the bruises and the cuts and, and the things where he was whipped and all the, the, the things were shown. Does this, this the scripture say here? He fulfilled, and all these things of scripture, just like he said, but, and, and this is the showing of what he did and, and in a greater nutshell. And so you can now glorify God in a greater way of how perfect the word of God is fulfilled. And how all these things had to be done. They had to be all these things for us. See, you know, the lamb is when we, the sacrifice was when we say, but the goat is afterwards when we commit things that we don't mean to do. And the ram and the, and the ox is for uh, those in leadership and they don't mean what they did and, the, and the, that was covered by as well. And then there's the, the the pigeon is the purification and continue of what he's doing but um but also uh the sometimes the go uh re represent also what for leaders what they've done and they know and, and the god if they repent god cleanses his soul god was all these things all in one perfect savior lord that he did he did all these things and so and and, and this perfect time of Pesach, uh, Passover, resurrection um, time, let us remember what he did. Because, but he didn't stay there. He got resurrected just like we will be resurrected. We will get a glorified body. When we see him, we'll be like him, the word of God says. Amen. So let's remember the eighth day of fulfillment is nigh our dwelling places. Amen. So I want to pray for those that need to get saved today. God is, a, a, he wants to save your soul, Arabs. He wants to save your soul, uh, lukewarm uh, Jews and Christians, and, and everybody in the land and the sea. And, and God wants you to get saved. So just repeat this prayer. Dear God, Yahweh, I ask you into my spirit, soul, and body as Lord and Savior of my life. Love you very much, Yeshua Jesus. Amen. You prayed that prayer. I believe you're born again today. Let me pray for the baptism and and the and and the conclusion of prayer for you right now. Father, I pray for them. I ask them that that they be baptized in, in the fire of the Holy Spirit and 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 all the things of Scripture be fulfilled in their life. Uh, I pray for Psalms 91, 107, 119. And 103, 101, be fulfilled in their lives and protection that they need. As to continue the work the, and, and, and be uh, glorified by you every day. May the other creations that people call angels, but they are the creations of God, uh, be present and remind them to get in the word and to live for you, Father. May you glorify them and may they be good sons and daughters every day for you. Amen.
God loves you. I love you. Remember, God made us great because greater is He that's in us than He that's in the world. So, church, synagogue, kingdom of Israel, let's become great again. Amen. Uh, let's end with the Shalom prayer. Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. Holiness brings peace to pass His own ascending be with you. Another seven, never broken, complete peace of God. Of Yeshua Jesus be upon you. Amen. May Pesach be upon you. And remember that Pesach is both uh, uh, linear, which is daily God is passing over us and helping us, but also uh, temporal, uh, which means there's different parts and times that God does things for us that are great uh, for the whole earth. It, it's wonderful. And remember, he's already done seven of the t temporal uh, uh, Pesach Passovers. There's been seven times in history. And there's one more. And that's when he comes again the second time. And he, and he does away with the evil on the earth and the righteous inherits the earth. Amen. And all things of Scripture is totally fulfilled from Genesis to Revelation, every word. Amen with his second coming. So God bless you. The Lord keep in all his ways and shine upon you and bring the rest of God through his holiness and revival be upon you. Amen. Shalom.